A hedge fund is an investment fund that pulls capital from a limited number of accredited individual or institutional investors and invests in a variety of assets, often with complex portfolio construction and risk management techniques. It is administered by a professional management firm, and often structured as a limited partnership, limited liability company, or similar vehicle. Hedge funds are generally distinct from mutual funds as their use of leverage is not capped by regulators and distinct from private equity funds is. The majority of hedge funds invest in relatively liquid assets. The name hedge fund originated from the paired long and short positions that the first of these funds used to hedge market risk. Over time the types and nature of the hedging concepts expanded, as did the different types of investment vehicles. Today, hedge funds engage in a diverse range of markets and strategies and employ a wide variety of financial instruments and risk management techniques. Hedge funds are made available only to certain accredited investors and cannot be offered or sold to the general public. As such, they generally avoid direct regulatory oversight, bypass licensing requirements applicable to investment companies, and operate with greater flexibility than mutual funds and other investment funds. However, regulations passed in the United States and Europe after the financial crisis of 2007-8 were intended to increase government oversight of hedge funds and eliminate certain regulatory gaps. While hedge funds have existed for many decades and become increasingly popular, growing to be one of the world's largest asset management classes by 2014, according to a report by Hedge Fund Research, published in October 2015. Hedge fund industry assets shrunk by $95 billion to $2.87 trillion in the third quarter, making this their worst year since 2008. One of the best performing hedge funds in 2014, William Ackman's Pershing Square Holdings portfolio which had roughly $20 billion earlier in 2015, declined by 12.6% by October to $16.5 billion in assets. Hedge funds are most often open-ended and allow additions or withdrawals by their investors. A hedge fund's value is calculated as a share of the fund's net asset value, meaning that increases and decreases in the value of the fund's investment assets have directly reflected in the amount an investor can later withdraw. Many hedge fund investment strategies aim to achieve a positive return on investment regardless of whether markets are rising or falling. Hedge fund managers often invest money of their own in the fund they manage, which serves to align their own interests with those of the investors in the fund. A hedge fund typically pays its investment manager an annual management fee and a performance fee. Some hedge funds have several billion dollars of assets under management. As of 2009, hedge funds represented 1.1% of the total funds and assets held by financial institutions. As of June 2013, the estimated size of the global hedge fund industry was $2.4 trillion. Etymology, the word hedge, meaning a line of bushes around a field, has long been used as a metaphor for the placing of limits on risk. Early hedge funds sought to hedge specific investments against general market fluctuations by shorting the market, hence the name. Nowadays, however, many different investment strategies are used, many of which do not hedge risk. History during the U.S. bull market of the 1920s, there were numerous private investment vehicles available to wealthy investors. Of that period the best known today is the Graham Newman Partnership, founded by Benjamin Graham and Jerry Newman, which was cited by Warren Buffett in a 2006 letter to the Museum of American Finance as an early hedge fund. The sociologist Alfred W. Jones is credited with coining the phrase hedged fund and is credited with creating the first hedge fund structure in 1949. Although this has been disputed, Jones referred to his fund as being hedged, a term then commonly used on Wall Street to describe the management of investment risk due to changes in the financial markets.
In the 1970s, hedge funds specialized in a single strategy and most fund managers followed the long, short equity model. Many hedge funds closed during the recession of 1969-70 and the 1973-1974 stock market crash due to heavy losses. They received renewed attention in the late 1980s. During the 1990s, the number of hedge funds increased significantly, funded with wealth created during the 1990s stock market rise. The increased interest was due to the aligned interest compensation structure and the promise of above higher returns. Over the next decade hedge fund strategies expanded to include credit arbitrage, distressed debt, fixed income, quantitative, and multi-strategy. U.S. institutional investors such as pension and endowment funds began allocating greater portions of their portfolios to hedge funds. During the first decade of the 21st century hedge funds gained popularity worldwide, and by 2008 the worldwide hedge fund industry held $1.93 trillion in assets under management. However, the 2008 financial crisis caused many hedge funds to restrict investor withdrawals and the popularity in AUM totals declined. AUM totals rebounded and in April 2011 were estimated at almost $2 trillion. As of February 2011, update, 61% of worldwide investment in hedge funds comes from institutional sources. In June 2011, the hedge funds with the greatest AUM was Bridgewater Associates, Mann Group, Paulson & Co., Revan Howard, and Oxif. Bridgewater Associates had $70 billion under management as of 1 March 2012. Update. At the end of that year, the 241 largest hedge fund firms in the United States collectively held $1.335 trillion. In April 2012, the hedge fund industry reached a record high of $2.13 trillion total assets under management. Top Hedge Funds Managers 2015 In June 2015 Forbes listed George Soros of Quantum Group of Funds. Ray Dalio of Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest hedge fund firm in 2015 with $155 billion assets under management compared to $122 billion under assets in 2011. Stephen A. Cohen of Point72 Asset Management, formerly known as SAC, Capital Advisors, John Paulson of Paulson & Co., whose hedge funds as of December 2015 had $19 billion assets under management, compared to $18 billion in September 2013 and $36 billion in early 2011. David Tepper of Appaloosa Management, Paul Tudor Jones II of Tudor Investment Corporation, Daniel Ock of Oxif Capital Management Group with more than $40 billion in assets under management in 2013. Israel Englander of Millennium Management, Leon G. Cooperman of Omega Advisors, Michael Platt of Bluecrest Capital Management Europe's third biggest hedge fund firm, Stanley Drucken Miller, Daniel Loeb of Third Point LLC with a portfolio worth $14 billion, James Dinan of Your Capital Management, Stephen Mandel Jr. of Lone Pine Capital with $26.7 billion under management at end June 2015. Larry Robbins of Glenview Capital Management with approximately $9.2 billion of assets under management as of July 2014. Glenn Dubin of Highbridge Capital Management, Paul Singer of Elliott Management Corporation, an activist hedge fund with more than $23 billion in assets under management in 2013, and a portfolio worth $8,124,567,000 as of the first quarter of 2015. Michael Hintzer of CQS with $14.4 billion of assets under management as of June 2015, and David Einhorn of Greenlight Capital, as the top 20 billionaire hedge fund managers. Strategies Hedge fund strategies are generally classified among four major categories. 
global macro, directional, event-driven, and relative value. Strategies within these categories each entail characteristic risk and return profiles. A fund may employ a single strategy or multiple strategies for flexibility, for risk management, or for diversification. The hedge fund's prospectus, also known as an offering memorandum, offers potential investors information about key aspects of the fund, including the fund's investment strategy, investment type, and leverage limit. The elements contributing to a hedge fund strategy include the hedge fund's approach to the market, the particular instrument used, the market sector the fund specializes in, the method used to sell hooked investments, and the amount of diversification within the fund. There are a variety of market approaches to different asset classes, including equity, fixed income, commodity, and currency. Instruments used include equities, fixed income, futures, options and swaps. Strategies can be divided into those in which investments can be selected by managers, known as discretionary, qualitative, or those in which investments are selected using a computerized system, known as systematic, quantitative. The amount of diversification within the fund can vary. Funds may be multi-strategy, multi-fund, multi-market, multi-manager or a combination. Sometimes hedge fund strategies are described as absolute return and are classified as either market neutral or directional. Market neutral funds have less correlation to overall market performance by neutralizing the effective market swings whereas directional funds utilize trends and inconsistencies in the market and have greater exposure to the market's fluctuations. Global macro hedge funds utilizing a global macro investing strategy take sizable positions in share, bond or currency markets in anticipation of global macroeconomic events in order to generate a risk-adjusted return. Global macro fund managers use macroeconomic analysis based on global market events and trends to identify opportunities for investment that would profit from anticipated price movements. While global macro strategies have a large amount of flexibility due to their ability to use leverage to take large positions in diverse investments in multiple markets, the timing of the implementation of the strategies is important in order to generate attractive, risk-adjusted returns. Global macro is often categorized as a directional investment strategy. Global macro strategies can be divided into discretionary and systematic approaches. Discretionary trading is carried out by investment managers who identify and select investments. Systematic trading is based on mathematical models and executed by software with limited human involvement beyond the programming and updating of the software. These strategies can also be divided into trend or counter-trend approaches depending on whether the fund attempts to profit from following trends, or attempts to anticipate and profit from reversals in trends. Within global macro strategies, there are further sub-strategies including systematic diversified, in which the fund trades in diversified markets, or systematic currency, in which the fund trades in currency markets. Other sub-strategies include those employed by commodity trading advisors, where the fund trades in futures in commodity markets or in swaps. This is also known as a managed future fund. CTAs trade in commodities and financial instruments, including stock indices. In addition they take both long and short positions, allowing them to make profit in both market upswings and downswings. Directional Directional investment strategies utilize market movements, trends, or inconsistencies when picking stocks across a variety of markets. Computer models can be used, or fund managers will identify and select investments. These types of strategies have a greater exposure to the fluctuations of the overall market than do market-neutral strategies. Directional hedge fund strategies include U.S. and international long, short equity hedge funds, where long equity positions are hedged with short sales of equities or equity index options. 
Within directional strategies, there are a number of sub-strategies. Emerging markets funds focus on emerging markets such as China and India, whereas sector funds specialize in a specific areas including technology, healthcare, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, energy and basic materials. Funds using a fundamental growth strategy invest in companies with more earnings growth than the overall stock market or relevant sector, while funds using a fundamental value strategy invest in undervalued companies. Funds that use quantitative and financial signal processing techniques for equity trading are described as using a quantitative directional strategy. Funds using a short bias strategy take advantage of declining equity prices using short positions. Event-driven Event-driven strategies concern situations in which the underlying investment opportunity and risk are associated with an event. An event-driven investment strategy finds investment opportunities in corporate transactional events such as consolidations, acquisitions, recapitalizations, bankruptcies, and liquidations. Managers employing such a strategy capitalize on valuation inconsistencies in the market before or after such events, and take a position based on the predicted movement of the security or securities in question. Large institutional investors such as hedge funds are more likely to pursue event-driven investing strategies than traditional equity investors because they have the expertise and resources to analyze corporate transactional events for investment opportunities. Corporate transactional events generally fit into three categories, distress securities, risk arbitrage, and special situations. Distress securities include such events as restructurings, recapitalizations, and bankruptcies. A distressed securities investment strategy involves investing in the bonds or loans of companies facing bankruptcy or severe financial distress. When these bonds or loans are being traded at a discount to their value, hedge fund managers pursuing the distressed debt investment strategy aim to capitalize on depressed bond prices. Hedge funds purchasing distressed debt may prevent those companies from going bankrupt, as such an acquisition deters foreclosure by banks. While event-driven investing in general tends to thrive during a bull market, distressed investing works best during a bear market. Risk arbitrage or merger arbitrage includes such events as mergers, acquisitions, liquidations, and hostile takeovers. Risk arbitrage typically involves buying and selling the stocks of two or more merging companies to take advantage of market discrepancies between acquisition price and stock price. The risk element arises from the possibility that the merger or acquisition will not go ahead as planned. Hedge fund managers will use research and analysis to determine if the event will take place. Special situations are events that impact the value of a company's stock, including the restructuring of a company or corporate transactions including spin-offs, share buybacks, security issuance, repurchase, asset sales, or other catalyst-oriented situations. To take advantage of special situations the hedge fund manager must identify an upcoming event that will increase or decrease the value of the company's equity and equity-related instruments. Other event-driven strategies include credit arbitrage strategies, which focus on corporate fixed income securities, an activist strategy where the fund takes large positions in companies and uses the ownership to participate in the management, a strategy based on predicting the final approval of new pharmaceutical drugs, and legal catalyst strategy, which specializes in companies involved in major lawsuits. Relative value Relative value arbitrage strategies take advantage of relative discrepancies in price between securities. The price discrepancy can occur due to mispricing of securities compared to related securities, the underlying security or the market overall. Hedge fund managers can use various types of analysis to identify price discrepancies in securities, including mathematical, technical or fundamental techniques.
Relative value is often used as a synonym for market neutral, as strategies in this category typically have very little or no directional market exposure to the market as a whole. Other relative value substrategies include fixed income arbitrage, exploit pricing inefficiencies between related fixed income securities, equity market neutral, exploits differences in stock prices by being long and short in stocks within the same sector, industry, market capitalization, country, which also creates a hedge against broader market factors. Convertible arbitrage, exploit pricing inefficiencies between convertible securities and the corresponding stocks, asset-backed securities, fixed income arbitrage strategy using asset-backed securities, credit long, short, the same as long, short equity but in credit markets instead of equity markets, statistical arbitrage, Identifying pricing inefficiencies between securities through mathematical modeling techniques. Volatility arbitrage. Exploit the change in implied volatility instead of the change in price. Yield alternatives. Non-fixed income arbitrage strategies based on the yield instead of the price. Regulatory arbitrage. The practice of taking advantage of regulatory differences between two or more markets. Risk arbitrage, exploiting market discrepancies between acquisition price and stock price. Miscellaneous in addition to those strategies within the four main categories, there are several strategies that do not fit into these categorizations or can apply across several of them. Fund of hedge funds, a hedge fund with a diversified portfolio of numerous underlying single manager hedge funds. Multi-strategy, a hedge fund using a combination of different strategies to reduce market risk. Minimum account fund, the minimum amount to open a hedge fund account is $10 million or $2.5 million with holding. Multi-manager, a hedge fund wherein the investment is spread along separate sub-managers investing in their own strategy. Withdrawal holding. A hold is placed on all major withdrawals for 90 days prior and after hedge fund is created and established. 130 to 30 funds. Equity funds with 130% long and 30% short positions, leaving a neck long position of 100%. Risk parity. Equalizing risk by allocating funds to a wide range of categories while maximizing gains through financial leveraging.